I'm here in Columbus, Ohio at the State of the City Address with Mayor Coleman. I'm here with 33 other victims of gun violence to represent the 34 Americans killed by guns every day in America. I'm going to about their stories and their situations and what we can do to fix background checks in this country. Connie, can you please explain to us your experience and why you started Hearts Healing Hearts? Well, my son was murdered in um, 2004. Uh, I guess the whole experience for me, the most painful part is that the, the man who actually pulled the trigger had just got out of prison, well, out of jail three weeks before he killed my son on a similar type of charge, but uh, nobody would testify. And so he was able to get out, and three weeks later he killed my son. So he was in possession of a firearm he should never have had? Yes. I feel that everyone who purchases a firearm should have a background check. In the so Nick, uh, can you please tell me about your experience with gun violence? Uh, well, basically, uh, about four years ago, uh, me and my friends were at a house party and I heard a loud bang. And, and once I heard that bang, you know, I, I dove immediately under the stairs for protection and I checked myself and, you know, made sure that I was okay. And I thought, hey, I, I, I was not, there's nothing wrong with me, okay. So um, I, I went into the next room and, you know, I checked on my, all my friends. I said, how are you guys doing? Checking on everyone. And after that, I felt weak and I just dropped to my knees and, you know, began to cough up blood. And then, you know, one of my friends lifted up my shirt. And that's when I saw the, the three uh, bullet holes there. And I basically, you know, <clears throat> it was just shocking to me, you know, that, that I, out of, you know, out of all people really would be shot. In terms of having better background checks and closing loopholes, mm -hmm. do you think that would help? curb gun violence in this country? Oh yeah, de most definitely, because I know that um, there's most people who can't even get a gun license today and actually go buy them a gun, so what they do is actually wait for the gun shows to come to town, and they actually go and purchase them that way, and then they distribute them you know, on the streets. And um, it's not to say that people don't have the rights to bear arms or have guns, because of course they do. That's to defend yourself, you know, not to go to try to kill someone, not to... Debbie. What can you tell us about your story and your experiences with gun violence? Um, I lost my son, Dustin Hart, um, almost four years ago, on April 30th of 2007. He was uh, 27 years old and he was sitting in his car at a stop sign and he was shot in the head. Um, the tragedy from this is never ending and it is horrible to wake up every morning and see another person shot, another victim from these guns. And I don't think guns need to be in people's hands who are irresponsible gun owners. Um, I own a gun, but um, you know, I keep it at home. I've gone to the uh, shooting range so that I knew what it felt like when I shot it and I wasn't afraid of it. I've never had to use it, hope I never do. I've had it for 13 years. Um, but I just don't think that anybody should be able to get a gun. Sally, what can you tell us about your experience with gun violence? Uh, my experience with gun violence was the taking of my son's life. Jonathan went missing in 2005. He was found 83 days later in a field in Knox County, which is part of Mount Vernon, Ohio. He had been executed, killed execution style, he had multiple gun wounds to his head. Therefore, I never saw Jonathan after like March the 19th. That was the last contact I had with my son. If a parolee hadn't had a gun, if it was out on parole, my son would still be alive. So my stance on guns, once you fire that bullet, it doesn't come back. We have to get these guns off the street. We as a society, not me personally, but so many people have become desensitized. Every night there's a murder, and they just act like it's as common as a common cold, and it should never be something that we get used to. This is not the way we're supposed to live. Do you, do you think that fixing our background check system oh, and closing the loopholes yes. will help? Very much so. Like these gun shows, anybody can buy a gun. I Margarita, I see you have two pictures here of your sons. Can you yes. please tell us what happened? I lost Byron Boyce on January the 12th, 1998. He had stayed over to a friend's home and he was waiting for a ride home and he fell asleep. A home invasion went bad and he was shot, single gunshot to the head. It rocked my family, it devastated us. Ten years later, on June the 4th, 2008, Preston was hit by a stray bullet as he walked down the street with his brother, who was in a wheelchair at the time from a car wreck and could not walk. 
Do you think that stepping up background checks and closing loopholes will help curb gun violence in this country? Yes. I mean, you shouldn't be able to just walk into a gun show, see something and be able to buy it, show an ID, and it could be anything. And then the gun dealer just out to make money says, sure. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really and appreciate everything. Thank you, you for talking to me. Thank, thank you, you so much. Give me a hug. Thank you.